Namaste and good morning in Canada and good evening in Nepal. Welcome to the first virtual live web webinar series organized by Federation of Canada, Nepal Chambers of Commerce. I'm Aisha Garun, event coordinator of FCNCC, moderator of this program, and we are here live on CanadaCover.com. I would like to welcome all the viewers from Canada, Nepal, and around the world to a very special day for all Nepalese Canadians residing in um, residing in Canada and Nepal as we are celebrating 57th Canada-Nepal Diplomatic Relation Day. This year, we are vir celebrating virtually due to a pandemic, but hopefully we'll be able to celebrate in pe person next year. We're joined today by our distinguished panelists from Canada, Nepal, and India, including our chief guest, His Excellency, Ambassador of Nepal to Canada. I would like to welcome you all to this webinar on Canada-Nepal trade promotion. Before taking views from our panelists, I would like to highlight briefly on the vision of FCNCC. FCNCC was formed in October 2021 to build a community of business professionals to work towards the promotion of bilateral trade and relations between Nepal and Canada. Within the short months of the formation of FCNCC, the team has been continuously advocating with the Embassy of Nepal in Ottawa, various consul uh, consulate offices, federal and provincial government of Canada regarding challenges and opportunities of trade and relation between Canada and Nepal, including opening of Canada trade and visa office in Nepal. Now we're going to play national anthem of Nepal and Canada, so I, could, I would like to request everyone to stand up wherever you are. Thank you, everyone. Now, without any further delay, I would like to introduce our chief guest, His Excellency Ambassador of Nepal to Ottawa, Mr. Brigu Dungana. 
Mr. Brigo Dengana, a career diplomat, has been ambassador of Nepal to Canada since May 2019. He joined the Nepali Foreign Services in February 1996 as section officer. Subsequently, he was promoted to under secretary in April 2008 and joined secretary in February 2016. In 25 years of his diplomatic career, he has held various positions in the ministry and the Nepali missions abroad. He is graduate of law and holds master's degree in public administration, both from Tribhuvan University, Nepal. He has also obtained postgraduate diploma in diplomatic studies from the University of Oxford and diploma in international law from the University of Delhi. So Mr. Brigu Dungana, please. Thank you very much. Good morning. Namaste to all. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, you can, you can go, go ahead, uh, Aisa. Let's go ahead with all the guests, then I'll take over. Sure. Our special guest um, includes Miss mm -hmm. Jennifer Kay. She's the first secretary and trade commissioner at High Commission of Canada in India over two decades of experience in political, economic affairs and advocacy, public affairs, public policy, and strategic communication. She completed her bachelor's and master's of arts from University of Victoria. We have Mr. Dhirad uh, Sarma, trade advisor of Nepal for Trade Commissioner Service Canada. He's the president and CEO of Alpha Beta Institute, representing more than 300 institutions from over 18 countries. We have our keynote speakers, Mr. Patrick Brown. Mr. Patrick Brown was elected as a mayor of Brampton in the 2018 municipal election. He was the MP for Barrie from 2006 6 to 2015. He's the leader of the PC Party of Ontario from 2015 to 2018. Mr. Brown has close relationships with many of Ontario's diverse ethnic communities, including Nepalese community. We have our MP, Garnet Genius. Garnet Genius is the member of parliament for Sherwood Park Front Saskatchewan in Alberta, Canada, and shadow minister of international development. He's a tireless advocate for human rights and religious freedom, both domestically and, ab and abroad. In 2017, MP Genius was voted McLean's Parli Parliamentarian of the Year by his peers across party lines. We have MP Dan Moyes. Dan is the member of Parliament of for Flam Flamborough, <laughs> Glanbrook, and also Deputy Shadow Minister of Infra Infrastructure and Communities. Dan has worked on Parliament Hill for two federal cabinet ministers at Queen Park and in the federal leader's office and alongside local members of parliament and members of provincial parliament. He's a member of Advers uh, Adv advisory board of Federation of Canada and Nepal Chambers of Commerce. We have our speakers, Mr. Kunraj Mani Sarma is He's a honorary consulate general of Nepal to Toronto, CEO of president of CEO and President of Kunzer Sarma and Associate in Inc., licensed insolvency trustee since 1978. He has completed his MBA, PhD, and CIRP trustee. We have, our, we have Mr. Steve Hess. He is a Consulate General of Canada um, of, of Nepal to Calgary since 2016. We have Mr. Mohan Krishna Shrestha. He is former ambassador of Nepal to France. He joined the diplomatic service of Nepal in March, 1983. He has visited no fewer than 71 countries in six continents. Mr. Shrestha has been awarded with Gorkha Daksin Bahu for class, civil service uh, award, and also letter of appreciation by the government in the education field. He's also the member of advisory board of FCNCC. Mr. Sirkar Gota, President of Federation of, um, of Nepali Chamber of Commerce and Industry, FNCCI. Mr. Gota is the Chairman and Managing Director of Gota Group, one of the largest private sector organizations of Nepal. He is the past president of the Nepal Automobile Dealer Association, NADA, and member of advisory board of FCNCC. We have Mr. Rajendra Kitan, Chairman Kitan Group, He's Honorary Consul Consulate General of Portugal to Nepal. 
Senator of Pokhara and Kathmandu University, honored by various awards, including Gorkha Dachin Bahu and Jan Sewastri, bestowed by President of Nepal. We have Mr. Tursi Dharil. He is a professor at Centennial College since 2007. Mr. Tulsi Dharil holds a CM, Chartered Marketer, MBA, and PhD in Marketing. Dr. Dharil has been teaching since 1987, including internationally. He is the winner of top 25 Canadian Immigrant Awards in 2019 and member of Advisory Board of FCNCC. Mr. Deepa Gautam, he's the president of NRNA Canada. NRNA Canada is a nonprofit organization in Canada. We are they are committed to uniting and supporting over 55,000 Nepalese Canadian people mm -hmm. all over Canada. And of course, we have our president, Mr. Vijay Pardal currently serving as a president of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce, founder and CEO of Capital Investment Group, CIG, founder and chairman of Canadian Nepalese Foundation, serving in the recruitment business for more than eight years. He's the vice president, past vice president of NRNA Canada, previously ran as a member of parliament nomination candidate for the riding of Mississauga Malton during last federal election. And he will be, and he will be doing the question answer round in the next in the next segment. And of course, I'm Aisha Gurung, event coordinator of FCNCC. Thank you so much, Aisha, for your wonderful introduction for everyone. Um, in the midst of the pandemic, our life has changed tremendously. So we have no choice but to adapt to new technology. So we are here today connecting from different part of the world. Uh, we are connecting from different parts of the world uh, in Nepal, India, and Canada. So today we will be basically reflecting on more than five decades of long bilateral relationship between Canada and Nepal, and then how we can promote the trade between Canada and Nepal, navigating on the political, economic, business, social, and environmental transformation, something that would be a game changer for a country like Nepal. I would like to begin with uh, our chief guest, His Excellency, Mr. Vrigu Dungana. Please welcome Mr. Vrigu Dungana for his opening remarks. Thank you. Um, th thank you, Vijay Ji. Uh, Mr. Vijay Pordel, uh, president of uh, the FCNCC. Uh, Prominent uh, uh, special guests, uh, Ms. Uh, Jennifer K., uh, Mr. Duras Sarma, uh, Mr. Patrick Brown, MP Dan Moy, as uh, Mr. Garnet, MP Garnet Genius, uh, Dr. Kunjarmani Sarma, Honorary Council General of Nepal in Toronto, uh, Mr. Steve Hayes, Honorary Council of Nepal in Calgary, uh, Mr. Mohan Krishna Sresta, former Ambassador of Nepal to France. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sekhar Golcha, uh, President of FNCCI, Mr. Rajendra Kumar Khetan, CEO of uh, Khetan Group, Dr. Tulsi Dere, uh, Mr. Deepa Gautam, President of NRNA Canada. Uh, namaste. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Vijay Podel and the entire team of uh, the FNCCC uh, for inviting me to participate uh, in this webinar on Canada-Nepal trade promotion, uh, organized uh, on the occasion of the 57th uh, anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Nepal and Canada. Uh, I would like to extend uh, my sincere congratulations uh, to all of us uh, on this happy occasion. Uh, as uh, we celebrate this uh, important day, uh, it gives me immense pleasure to recall that uh, Nepal and Canada uh, have been enjoying excellent relationship uh, marked by goodwill, friendship, and cooperation. Uh, it is flourishing at different levels. Uh, besides relations at uh, the official level, uh, those uh, at the institutional and the people-to-people -people levels have uh, deepened considerably over the decades. Uh, Canada has uh, been uh, a reliable development partner of Nepal and uh, its cooperation for Nepal's uh, socio-economic uh, development endeavors for decades, so it's highly appreciated. Uh, importantly, uh, the depth of friendship uh, between the two countries uh, is amply reflected by 
uh, Canadian support uh, to Nepal in difficult times, uh, uh, such as post-natural disasters and calamities. Uh, the support uh, from the people and the government of Canada to us uh, in the aftermath of the devastating earthquake of April 2015, as well as uh, for Nepal's uh, post-earthquake reconstruction efforts uh, was uh, remarkable. Uh, the people and the government of Canada also supported Nepal by providing uh, much needed vaccines and medical equipment uh, to fight against uh, the COVID-19 pandemic recently. Uh, the strong relations uh, between the two uh, countries have been further enriched uh, uh, by recent high-level visits uh, and the meetings and exchange of views on pertinent matters. Uh, the meeting between the prime ministers of the two countries, a uh, visit to Nepal by the Speaker of the Senate of Canada, uh, exchange of views uh, between the foreign ministers and the regular meetings of the bilateral consultation mechanism at the foreign ministry level. Uh, formation of bilateral parliamentary friendship groups, uh, among other engagements, uh, have been extremely important. Uh, such increasing engagement uh, between the two sides uh, has also given a new dynamism to our uh, quest for advancing mutual benefit. And accordingly, uh, implementing the understandings reached uh, during these uh, visits and meetings uh, remains a top priority of the two countries. Uh, I'm pleased uh, to recall here that uh, both our sides uh, wish to take uh, uh, our bilateral relations to a new height, uh, including through further expansion and the consolidation of uh, mutually beneficial cooperation. Uh, both countries have also been working closely in international forums on such issues as uh, climate change, peacekeeping, human rights, multilateralism, and uh, promoting uh, the developing countries' agendas. Uh, today, as I talk about uh, Nepal-Canada relations and the promotion of trade, of course, it would be from, uh, pertinent to mention briefly about uh, uh, Nepal's current priorities. Uh, in Nepal, uh, efforts are now being uh, focused on uh, bringing uh, positive change and prosperity in the lives of the Nepali people by building a foundation for uh, socio-economic transformation and emphasizing high and equitable economic development. Uh, it may be noted that uh, Nepal has made good progress in socioeconomic development. Immediately before the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, the average uh, economic growth rate for three years was 7.3%. Uh, As in other countries, the pandemic affected our economy severely. Uh, two years ago, we suffered a negative growth rate, however, uh, there have been some improvements after that. This year, it is going to be better. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, the United Nations General Assembly on uh, 24th of November last year approved a resolution uh, to upgrade Nepal from a least developed country to a middle income developing country by 2026. Uh, Nepal will now uh, have the preparatory period of five years for a smoother transition. Uh, we remain committed to uh, making all our efforts for a smooth graduation uh, with uh, the enhanced level of support from uh, the bilateral, regional, and multilateral uh, developing and trading partners. Uh, the next milestone of Nepal is to become a middle-income country by 2030. Uh, and uh, such, such type of uh, mission of development and the prosperity would, of course, uh, require, among other things, uh, uh, increased trade, diversified connectivity, uh, enhanced foreign investment in the areas of national priority, increased movement of tourists, and acquisition of high technology. The government has uh, accordingly taken various concrete measures, such as policy reform, setting up of suitable mechanisms, and organizing uh, promotional activities, including through uh, economic diplomacy. Uh, and uh, we, when we talk about uh, economic diplomacy, our coordination with the, and the support from Canada would always remain crucial. Uh, in this context, uh, the collaboration uh, between the Nepali and Canadian business organizations, communities, and uh, entrepreneurs, as well as uh, uh, development of strong relations would be critical uh, in both uh, forging mutually beneficial relations and helping Nepal uh, achieve economic prosperity. 
Uh, now, uh, talking about the trade, uh, Canada is uh, the 11th largest country for Nepal's export and the sixth largest in terms of uh, import. Uh, in 2020, for example, Nepal exported goods worth uh, uh, 755 million rupees to Canada. And in the same year, uh, its import from Canada stood at uh, 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 18 billion rupees. And nonetheless, uh, there is a tremendous potential of further trade expansion between our two countries. Uh, the duty-free market access available for the Nepali products in Canada can be utilized by our exporters. Uh, the business organizations and entrepreneurs uh, from both the countries have also taken important steps to foster bilateral trade. Uh, it is good to see that uh, with the initiatives of uh, dynamic entrepreneurs, some organizations uh, have also been formed in Canada in order to promote bilateral trade and investment, such as the Canada-Nepal Business Council and this uh, uh, FCNCC. Uh, we strongly believe that uh, bilateral trade can be further enhanced through uh, the establishment of links uh, between relevant entities and uh, uh, private sectors of the two countries uh, through formation of permanent mechanisms between the chambers of commerce uh, identification of products, uh, effective marketing, uh, exchange of budgets of officials and uh, trade delegations, and uh, participation in trade fairs. Uh, therefore, all of these uh, should continue to remain our priority. Uh, another area of focus should be foreign investment. Uh, Nepal has been inviting foreign investment in such priority sectors as uh, uh, physical infrastructure, hydropower, tourism, and industry. Uh, uh, Nepal has been pursuing a liberal economic and foreign investment policy. And uh, in order to improve investment climate, uh, it has uh, enacted important legislations, uh, statutory provisions uh, relating to land acquisition, company registration, uh, environmental assessment, and uh, infrastructure development uh, have been relaxed and simplified. Nepal offers an attractive incentive package in terms of corporate taxation, import duties, and export facilitation. Uh, besides that, uh, Nepal has used a demographic dividend with about 57% of the population as the working age group. Uh, the labor cost is uh, competitive and low, and there is a good pool of skilled uh, population. Uh, Nepal's strategic location within uh, the world's two largest markets, uh, India and China, of course, uh, serves as a compelling uh, incentive for investment. With India, it has duty-free arrangements uh, for its products. While China has granted a significant uh, number of uh, Nepali tariff lines of duty-free access to its market. And uh, besides that, Nepal has also been making significant progress in connectivity diversification. Uh, in terms of uh, promotional activities, we hosted uh, two uh, in, uh, investment summits in 2017 and March 2019, respectively, with encouraging response uh, uh, from a large number of foreign investors. Uh, investors from Canada also participated actively. So when it comes to investing, uh, Canadian investors have uh, many choices, of course, in Nepal, uh, besides other sectors, hydropower, remains a prime choice as Canada has a very good expertise and technology in hydropower generation and distribution. Uh, we continue to engage in promotional activities for attracting more FDI in the design. Uh, I believe that uh, further enhancing or enriching interconnectedness between Nepal and Canada in trade, investment, and other rel relevant matters uh, would go a long way uh, in consolidating our relations. Uh, this would be more relevant now as uh, we are striving to boost the economic recovery from the widespread effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the deeper engagement between uh, government agencies as well as business communities and entrepreneurs from both uh, Canada and uh, Nepal uh, in coming days uh, would be instrumental in this regard. Uh, I once again would like to take this opportunity to assure of uh, the full support and cooperation from the Embassy of Nepal in such activities. And uh, today I look forward to a fruitful discussion this morning. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Rigu Dungana. Um, uh, definitely, uh, as we move from aid focus to the trade focus, um, uh, this would lead to a better and enhanced uh, bilateral relationship between Canada and Nepal. So next, uh, we have a special guest, uh, uh, Ms. Jennifer Kay. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Ms. Jennifer Kay. Thank you for making your time in such a short notice. As a first secretary and trade commissioner of Canada to Nepal, uh, what kind of services you provide if, if Nepalese Canadian entrepreneurs wants to start a new venture in Nepal, uh, uh, Nepal or Canada? So uh, the the, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, please go ahead, uh, Miss uh, Jennifer Kay. Thank you very much, Mr. Fadel. Um, bonjour, bonsoir, tous et à toutes. Um, thank you, thank you all very much for joining us for this excellent celebration of these diplomatic relations. I am Jennifer Kay and I am First Secretary and Trade Commissioner at the High Commission of Canada in New Delhi, India. Um, at the High Commission, I manage a number of important files, including infrastructure, clean tech and life sciences, but our tra trade team covers the gamut. Um, and uh, but the main reason why I am here is that I have the unique privilege of representing Canada in Nepal. And I look forward to being able to travel there in the near future, hopefully. <laughs> um, as, as the ambassador mentioned, um, we have very, very long-standing bilateral relations with Nepal. And our relationship is rooted in strong people-to-people -people relations between our countries. The Nepali community in Canada numbers between 40 and 50,000 people, which makes an absolutely invaluable contribution to the rich multicultural fabric that is Canada. Bilateral trade between our countries is is modest, but it's getting better and we absolutely see potential and we have a collaborative relationship with, with Nepal. We definitely see potential for growth in both trade and investment, particularly I believe in the energy and aviation sectors. I am part of Canada's Trade Commissioner Service which is a network of trade commissioners in more than 160 cities worldwide. We help Canadian businesses export and partner internationally. We are Canadian companies on the ground support. Um, we help them prepare for international markets. We do commercial problem solving. We advocate on their behalf and most importantly, we help them make partnerships, which is a big part of the reason why I'm here tonight. We help try to find them partners worldwide, including with Nepal. For example, we're currently working on our annual activity plan, and I've seen a number of interesting uh, initiatives in various sectors, including clean tech, education, infrastructure, and aerospace. I see great things for the year ahead, and we're really looking forward to finally getting to Nepal. Um, we hope to be able to help Canadian companies get into that market. We hope to be able to attend local trade shows in Nepal throughout 2022 and into 2023. And we would really like to bring Canadian companies to those shows or bring Nepali counterparts to, to mm -hmm. Canada. Um, I would also like to let you know that the Trade Commissioner Service has a trade advisor based in Kathmandu, Mr. Dwarad Sharma, who is on my screen here. Um, he is based uh, in Nepal and he is participating in this webinar, as I said. Um, he helps us on the ground and we're delighted to have him working with us. I would also like to point out um, we can't see her, but um, Ms. Annabelle Larouche, who is the Senior Trade Commissioner based here at the High Commission in New Delhi, India, is also on, on this webinar as well. So what the TCS does is we connect people. So let us help you. If you're in Nepal and you're interested in meeting a Canadian company, or if you're a Canadian business and thinking about exporting to Nepal, 
please don't hesitate to contact either Dwaraj or myself and we will put you in touch. I will put you in touch with the appropriate trade commissioner based at the either at the High Commission or at one of our eight offices or across India. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci de votre collaboration. I look forward to hearing from others. Um, I look forward to having more of a discussion about how we can improve trade. I think there are definite potential um, potential ways. It, it's challenging at the moment with the pandemic, but um, but we're hoping to to get over the next wave of the pandemic and move forward with our trade relations. Thank you. Merci. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Jennifer Kay and, uh, uh, and uh, Annabella as well for making your time and giving us your important uh, views about promoting uh, trade between Canada and Nepal and how you can help in that regards. The next, uh, before moving to our next guest, I would like to uh, point out that uh, according to the World Bank uh, report, I have seen like the Nepal has a huge potential of uh, 9.2 billion worth uh, uh, trade that can create up about 220,000 new jobs. Uh, uh, maybe we can reach that uh, uh, mark in the in the near future uh, with all of all of your support. Uh, the next uh, special guest we have today is uh, Mr. Dear Sarba. Uh, Mr. Sarba, welcome to the webinar. As a trade advisor of Canada to Nepal, what do you see as the challenges and opportunity uh, of uh, for the bilateral trade? The floor is yours, Mr. Sarba. Thank you, thank you, Vijay. Thank you, Vijay. His Excellency, very good morning. Nepal is ambassador to Canada, the president of Federation of uh, Canada, Nepal Chambers of Commerce, and host of this program, Mr. Vijay Kaurel, Jennifer Kai, the first secretary and trade commissioner, Canadian High Commission, New Delhi, all distinguished guests and participants of this event. Uh, good evening from Kathmandu. Uh, let me uh, uh, first uh, you know, wish you all uh, and congratulate to all of us for the completion of 57 years of Nepal-Canada diplomatic relationship. Let me also introduce myself. I'm Duida Sharma and I'm in the business for the last 20 years. My business ranges from promotion, management of local and international education, English language testing, logistic management, healthcare, food, hospitality, solar power, and real estate. I am a national council member for Confederation of Nepalese Industries, CNI, and chair the Education Council. Besides this, I lead few study abroad focus associations, such as in Nepal for Australia as a president. And since 2021, I have been, I have the pleasure of working with the Trade Commissioner Services, DCS Canada, as a trade advisor based out in Nepal. My scope of work is to uh, promote Canadian capabilities in areas such as aviation, education, agriculture, uh, clean technology and uh, financial technology for Nepal and also in infrastructure and also share investment opportunity in Nepal as and when required. Nepal has plenty of things to learn from Canadian entrepreneurs and businesses. And given our transparency and investment friendly environment happens in Nepal, I believe Nepal could be a great investment hub, particularly in high-end agriculture uh, products, education services, tourism, hydropowers, and uh, IT. Uh, these are tremendous opportunity in all the above sectors where in the recent years, the government has done huge reforms in the investment climate, and it's going to be much better in the days to come. I'd like to thank Vijay for providing such a great platform to introduce myself and share words, and I wish uh, shared a few words, and I wish you great success of the event. Uh, please feel free to connect me if you need any assistance in Nepal. Thank you very much, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dira Sarma, for your important remarks. Uh, now, next, we have our keynote speaker, uh, MP, Member of Parliament, uh, Dan Muis uh, from Flamborough, Glanbrook. So welcome to the webinar, uh, MP Dan. So you have been uh, such an important advisor for FCNCC uh, as well, and has been a great help for our organization's uh, uh, organizational initiative. Uh, so please go ahead with your uh, views. Thank you. Sure, and, and um, good evening to, to those joining from uh, Nepal and New Delhi, and good morning to those uh, across Canada, including the Albertans who are up a bit earlier than, than those of us in Ontario today. Um, so having lived in Alberta for, for 10 years, I understand that everything happens at about 7 a.m. there and 9 a.m. here. So um, 
certainly an honor to be here for the 57th anniversary of the, the di diplomatic relations between Canada and Nepal. And that's obviously what we've all been talking about, but, but more importantly, how to strengthen and uh, broaden those relations. And I, I'd like to recognize uh, His Excellency the Ambassador, who I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, at the Embassy in Ottawa. And uh, as well, uh, welcome to the Trade Commissioners uh, who are here. And, and certainly that was interesting to hear some of a lot of the, the what's happening on the ground. Um, and hopefully you do get a chance, Jennifer, to, to go to, to Nepal as, as, uh, as uh, restrictions allow. And, uh, and, uh, and further develop that. Um, certainly a shout out to my colleague, um, Garnet Jenius, who's here and he's our shadow minister of uh, international development. And as, as was noted by the ambassador, has been very active on international human rights and religious freedoms. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anyone in parliament today who is, uh, who knows that better. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, Garnet is very active on that and we, we value his expertise here. And I know uh, I haven't seen Patrick, Mayor Patrick Brown on the call yet, but I know during his time as a, a federal parliamentarian and uh, as well um, uh, when he was leader of the Ontario PC party, he certainly was on the leading edge of, of developing relations between Canada and South Asia. And uh, certainly uh, be fortunate to hear from him today if, if, he's, if he's joining a little later on the call. But it's good to know that uh, he's supportive of this uh, initiative and the work of the FCNCC. Uh, thank you, of course, to, to BJ Padel, who's, who's been the driving force uh, for the FCNCC, and to uh, Aisha, who, uh, who uh, is organizing today's event. So officially, congratulations on the 57th uh, anniversary of the diplomatic relations. Uh, it's an important milestone for the Nepalese community. And, and uh, I think as Jennifer noted, that has grown to 40 or 50,000 uh, Nepalese Canadians across the country. Many are located um, here in the uh, greater Toronto Hamilton area. Uh, and, uh, and so that's a, a an important driver of those opportunities going forward. Uh, you know, trade is is the lifeblood of the Canadian economy, uh, and uh, and as well uh, the, the the Nepalese economy, and and that has been spoken about by uh, the ambassador and, and the trade commissioners as well, and heard about some of the various opportunities. But one of the things that I've noted in 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 uh, speaking with people that are that are all part of the FCNCC, there's a great depth of talent and. Um, and uh, connectedness, uh, they're true entrepreneurs and, and that sense of industry. And that's really the heart and soul of, of the group and very important to the, to the trade relationship as we go forward. You know, there's been some economists recently that have, have noted that throughout the pandemic, you know, private sector investment in the Canadian economy has, has fallen and, uh, you know, not kept pace with with uh, public sec uh, public investment, and so that's something that needs to change. And as we as we all talk about uh, the econ economic recovery and what that looks like going forward, uh, that's important. Um, you know, I think that some of the opportunities going forward uh, from our vantage point that that we've touched on is, um, and I think the ambassador referenced the fact that the, maybe at one point in time there was a, a Canada. Nepal uh, Parliamentary Friendship Group. Uh, there are a number of those associations, and I certainly refer to, to uh, the expertise of Garnet Genuis when, when he gets a chance to speak on this, but, but there isn't currently one, and that's maybe something, uh, particularly in those communities um, across Canada where we have those 40 or 50,000 Nepalese Canadians that are involved. That's, that's an opportunity for the MPs and senators that represent those regions. And those that are interested in furthering development uh, of relations between Nepal and Canada to come together and help advance that um, relationship, particularly as the as the, the parliament in uh, Nepal has changed in the past few years, and so that's an opportunity to build some of those relationships. Uh, one of the other things that the FCNCC has talked about is uh, is uh, is a, you know, a trade and tourism visit, uh, focus visit, and that's certainly something that would be helpful as as we hear about some of the individual initiatives from. The, the trade commissioners, whether or not that would uh, help advance the cause. But let me let me wrap up, um, uh, and I may wade into dangerous waters by uh, saying that over over the course of the holidays, I happened to be recommended uh, by a friend to watch the Netflix documentary Fourteen Peaks, and, and I suspect that there's maybe um, some in, in the Nepalese community that that feel that uh, maybe the portrayal wasn't accurate or maybe maybe there's some factual errors in the details but it was an interesting story and it 
and it was it was uh, the subtitle was "Nothing Is Impossible." And I think for those that haven't had a chance to see it, it's about uh, a Nepalese uh, mountain climber uh, who is uh, now a former uh, member of the British uh, military. But uh, him and his team uh, from Nepal and it was sort of a band of brothers uh, sought out to climb the 14 highest peaks. Uh, mountain peaks in the world, of course, many of them based in Nepal and in proximity to Nepal. And so uh, it's an inspiring story. And I think the takeaway for me from that was, was that, that, that um, spirit of overcoming challenges, uh, of, uh, of uh, you know, the fact that nothing's impossible, and uh, really that, that push and that drive. And I see that in all the conversations I've had with people in Nepal and Nepalese Canadians as well. And, and I think that's evident amongst this group today and, uh, and hopefully that'll be our uh, way forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, MP Dan, for your uh, very important uh, remarks and highlighting uh, the one of the uh, mountaineer who recently, um, uh, he climbed the world's highest mountains in less than a year, 14 peaks, and that's, uh, that's been in the Netflix uh, documentary as well. And uh, the next uh, uh, keynote speaker we have today is a uh, member of parliament, Garnet G uh, Genius, and he's uh, an international, he's a study minister of international development as well. And he has been MP for Cerro Park for Saskatchewan. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, MP Garnet. Well, thank you very much. It is uh, great to be with you today, and it's uh, an honor for me to follow my colleague, uh, Dan Muse, who, uh, who is a, a brand new member of Parliament, but is already exceeding me in so many areas, including his ability to edit his Zoom name uh, and add MP to the end of it, which I have yet to uh, figure out how to do. Um, and uh, it's, er it's earlier in Alberta, as, as he noted, which means I hadn't quite completed the combing job here. Dan is ahead of me on that front as well, although he has a bit of an easier job, it seems. So um, it is, uh, it's great to be with, with all of you and to speak uh, on this important anniversary of, of the forming of diplomatic relations between Canada and Nepal. Um, it is uh, such an important relationship um, in, 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 in a few different ways. Uh, we see, of course, as, as International Development Minister, I, I know that there's there's been a relationship that's been established. Uh, and, and part of that relationship has included international development uh, partnerships. Um, but uh, but I, but I can say as well, with the specific responsibility for international development, that sometimes uh, we can focus uh, too much of that and not enough on the fact that uh, the trade, that economic relationships uh, is such a critical way for uh, for supporting uh, poverty alleviation, uh, that if we focus only on on uh, on develop on international development as sort of this process of of of, uh, of grants and funding instead of as a process of of, of trade, um, both both are, are critical parts of the picture. Uh, but we should recognize that that trade uh, between c countries with different uh, different uh, at different stages of development uh, is uh, is is a critical uh, part of the picture. We should see trade opportunities. Uh, for uh, for all involved, uh, and um, and and the relationship is important as well in a context where, of course, so much of the world's attention is shifting to the Indo-Pacific region, and uh, the Canadian government is uh, in the process. We understand of of, uh, of talking about of developing an Indo-Pacific uh, strategy, and uh, that strategy needs to include, from our perspective, how we uh, how we strengthen relationship with. Uh, with a, a broad range range of countries, big and small, especially how we uh, work to to support uh, democracies, newer democracies, how we partner with uh, with with uh, democratic countries, and we support uh, the development of uh, of economic ties, uh, of uh, growth in in uh, in democratization and human rights, and um, in in other forms of just. Uh, strategic uh, strategic cooperation, uh, and I think uh, strength and partnership between Canada and Nepal uh, can and should be a key part of that. Uh, I wanted to mention as well uh, some some uh, note was made of the work I've done on on human rights, and uh, I um, I'm a one of the vice chairs of the Canada Tibet Parliamentary Friendship Group, which is a very uh, active parliamentary friendship group here in Canada, and I know that. Uh, there's a large uh, Tibetan diaspora community in Nepal, uh, and uh, there are many Canadian Tibetans uh, who who uh, who have uh, have been born in or spent time in Nepal, including a, 
a former member of my staff. So uh, I know uh, Nepal uh, and India uh, have uh, have hosted large numbers of uh, of Tibetan refugees, and uh, and the the willingness to do that is is uh, is, is is very important. And and um, and I know that those those relationships are are part of of just the fabric of, of the connection here in Canada with people that that have ties to or connections to uh, to, to Nepal. Um, so. I, uh, I I think I think Dan's point about friendship groups, seeing from from my own work in the Cosmic Tibet uh, Tibet group, uh, it would be it would be a great initiative for us to start, and maybe something Dan and I should talk about uh, more is uh, is is how we can facilitate that. Um, the the way the pandemic has shifted the technology of our interaction uh, with each other is, is is maybe important to think about here because the the big downside is it's made it uh, harder <laughs> to build new relationships. It's made it harder to travel. Uh, but the upside is uh, that there are so many new opportunities for virtual meetings and engagement between parliamentarians around the world uh, that at one time uh, I had much more limited contact with legislators around the world. But today, uh, through various networks, we have we have so many more opportunities. Uh, to have dialogue with uh, with legislators and uh, and and other other groups, uh, civil society groups, others on, on the other side of the world. So, uh, so let's work on getting a, a friendship group started and and uh, creating more opportunities for direct conversations uh, between legislators in Canada and in Nepal uh, on a, on a broad range of, of issues. Uh, and finally, as a as an Alberta uh, MP on this call, I wanted to just mention uh, the importance of of energy cooperation, uh, that Canada has the potential to uh, to grow as a, a, an energy superpower. Uh, we are a we are a free democratic country uh, that that is blessed with an abundance of energy, uh, and it has has uh, an incredibly innovative energy sector developing technology uh, that can help other countries respond to uh, to challenges in terms of energy security, uh, and. Uh, and, and, and my view, my bias is that we don't always do a good enough job at the government level of celebrating and promoting uh, that energy sector, but also the, the strategic and collaborative opportunities that are associated with that. So uh, it's great to see the, uh, the Consul General, uh, or the, the Honorary Consul, I should say, sorry, in, in Calgary who on, on this call. I'm sure these are issues that are uh, top of mind for him as well. Uh, and I uh, look forward to, as part of that, that strengthening of a bilateral relationship, uh, really exploring the areas for, uh, for energy cooperation and support in terms of strengthening energy security that, that could be happening at the level of, of technology and other things between, uh, between Canada and Nepal. So thank you again uh, for this opportunity, and I, I look forward to continuing to work together uh, with everybody here on, on all of those issues. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Member of Parliament, uh, MP da Garnet Genius. Uh, for important remarks, as uh, I see, you have been the champion for the riding of Sherwood Park for Saskatchewan, and uh, and especially in the matter of international development. And I, as I see, uh, you have been the most outspoken parliamentarian in uh, parliamentarian in the last few years, and keep uh, continue to do so. And thank you so much for making time and focusing especially on creating the friendship group and the parliamentary group and partnering with the democratic countries like Nepal. Uh, thank you so much once again. Next, I would like to move on to our mayor, uh, uh, Patrick Brown. Um, welcome to the webinar, Mr. Brown. Mayor Patrick has been a champion for the resident of uh, Brampton uh, GTA and surrounding, and he has been working very closely with the Nepalese community. Um, if you can please highlight what are the opportunities and incentives and for, uh, for the global Nepalese entrepreneur uh, for opening especially businesses in Brampton and Canada. Uh, Canada, uh, Mayor Brown, please go ahead. Okay, well, thank you, um, BJ. And let me say, first of all, it's great to be on this call with uh, my friends, Dan Muse and Garnet Jenis, who are great public servants and great MPs. And I know that they are champions of the Nepalese community as well. We have a, a large Nepalese community in Brampton, and it makes it um, uh, a really easy place to integrate. If you're a Nepalese company that is that is coming to Canada looking to uh, build a, a base, uh, in Brampton, we speak every language of the world, uh, and uh, we are a mosaic of the world. It's like a mini United Nations, and from every culinary option to sporting amenity, we have it in our city, um, and we are very focused on um, FDI. But BJ, before I get into that, let me just say, uh, I love how family-oriented and community-oriented the Nepalese community is. Uh, I find it, I'm sure Dan and Garnet find this in their 
communities as well, uh, the Nepalese community steps up. And we've seen that during COVID when there was uh, food drives, uh, support for uh, healthcare workers. Uh, I have been so impressed with the community focused nature of the community. Uh, when you have a Nepalese community in your city, they give back and they give back in spades. And it's a beautiful thing to see. You know, for me, it's, it's personal. Um, I've gone to Nepal. I've fallen in love with the people, the culture, the history of the country. My father is 80 now, but when he turned 70, uh, I said to him, to celebrate your 70th birthday, we can go anywhere in the world. And uh, I said, where do you want to go? And he said he wanted to go hiking in Nepal. So 10 years ago, we went hiking in Nepal and the most majestic scenery and vistas that you could imagine were in Nepal. As you know, when you fly into Kathmandu, uh, it's breathtaking. Um, I did... Uh, developed my affinity for momos when I was in uh, Nepal. And I am pleased to report that that's one of the culinary options we have in Brampton. We have some of the best momos in Canada in, in our city. So for anyone interested in um, building um, uh, investment in, in Canada uh, and creating opportunities, I think across the, the, the country, um, you'll find welcoming arms in our country. And there's some real advantages in Canada. Obviously, we've got preferential trade agreements that if you get into the Canadian marketplace, it gives you access uh, elsewhere. We've got talent in terms of human resources. We've got uh, significant human resources, trained, educated workforces. Uh, and we're seeing a real focus in areas of um, job growth. So I, I know in Brampton, we're really focusing on the innovation corridor. Um, we've got companies like MDA, uh, which builds the Canada space arm uh, that are creating significant footprints in our community. And so if you've got some great ideas in, in Nepal and you're looking forward to a landing spot of where you can commercialize those great ideas, I think Canada is uh, a great venue for that. And one thing that I wanted to highlight that may be of interest is Beehive. We just launched in Brampton last year and it's, um, uh, it's sort of on hold right now because of COVID, but it's an international soft landing uh, pad for startups. So we have a partnership with Startup Visa Canada. So we can issue startup visas for tech companies that want to enter the Canadian marketplace. There's one of these in Toronto and now there's one in, in Brampton. Um, and Dan and Garnet, someone that you might know well, Vikram Karana is the one that has set this up for us in, in Brampton. We already welcomed 15 companies um, from around the world, from Japan to Nigeria to India but I'd love to see some Nepalese tech companies come to our city. It is a pathway to citizenship. It's a pathway um, to enter Canada. And uh, uh, the startup visa is something that if, you, if you've got a company in, in Nepal that may, this may be applicable to, please look it up. And you can email me um, or BJ if you want to get more information. We'd love to, to welcome you to our community. But on that note, I just want to say have a great conference today. And thank you, BJ. I know you have been relentless and determined in creating platforms like this to um, really showcase opportunities for the community. Uh, and it's great to have someone like BJ, who is a, a proud Canadian, but proud of his Nepalese ancestry and trying to do everything he can to bring these uh, great uh, communities together. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Patrick Brown. So especially uh, at this moment, I would like to typically highlight on, on all the frontliners and the business initiative, especially uh, the Nepalese community and all other communities who had been who has been the champion during even during uh, during this pandemic. A lot of our communities um, member has uh, started a new venture, and it, it's really uh, uh, really uh, like inspiring to see that uh, people is stepping up and helping each other. And especially when you talk about uh, uh, when you talk about hiking into Nepal, I was just looking uh, into our previous uh, master Nadir Patel. He was. Uh, uh, he he had been to trekking to Everest Base Camp, and uh, uh, and uh, especially uh, as we head towards the normalcy, we really want to uh, take a group of business people from Canada as of uh, FCNCC and uh, go to the Everest uh, Base Camp, and uh, I think that would be a great uh, idea to uh, promote uh, the bilateral relationship between Nepal and Canada as well. Uh, thank you, Mayor Brown, once again. And the next speaker we have today is uh, Honorary Consulate General for Toronto, 
uh, of Nepal for for uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, Mr. Kunjamani Sharma. Uh, welcome to the webinar, Dr. Sharma. Dr. Sharma, you are on mute, Dr. Sharma. You are on mute. Kunjar sir, you are on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's perfect, perfect. All right. <clears throat> thank you. So I was saying, thank you, Mr. Podell. Ambassador Dungana and all the distinguished speakers and uh, um, people that are, uh, you know, working together with the Federation of uh, Nepalese Chamber of Commerce and uh, uh, of the Nepalese Chamber of Commerce to celebrate this 57th anniversary of uh, <clears throat> Nepal. Uh, Canada Nepal diplomatic relations. I think this is a wonderful uh, takeoff to concentrate on issues of, of uh, mutual interest and intercourse between the two countries, Canada and Nepal. <clears throat> Even though the diplomatic relations was established uh, 60 in 1965, the uh, resident embassy of Nepal uh, in Ottawa, where uh, Mr. Dungana now presides, uh, did not get established until 2012. That did not prevent the linkage between the two countries. Um, I remember one time when, so the, like, like the, the Canadian High Commission in New Delhi, which also represents Canadian embassy for Nepal, the Nepalese embassy in Washington, D.C. represented um, Nepal for Canada um, or, or uh, yeah. So uh, I, I was fortunate to, in those days, um, prior to these, uh, this diplomatic relations and increase in Nepal-Canada uh, dialogue and, um, and trade and cultural uh, exchanges. Uh, I was fortunate to go to Ottawa one time with a Nepalese diplomat uh, called uh, um, Jay Pratap Rana. Now, Mr. Rana was uh, the uh, Nepal's uh, ambassador for Canada. And he asked me, since I've been here uh, since uh, 1970, one, if uh, I would accompany him to meet uh, and participate in the dialogue with the with the with the uh, the foreign ministry of uh, of Canada at that time, now Global Affairs, which I think is a very appropriate name. Um, so so I went in there, and what amazed me was the Canadian government, um, including CEDA, um understanding and love for Nepal, how Nepal supported the Canadian policies um, globally, um, disarmament. The Nepalese contribution uh, is well recognized by Canada. So when I became the honorary counsel for uh, 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 Nepal here in Canada, that same year I went back to uh, Kathmandu uh, after 30 years absence, I might say. And the then prime minister, Mr. Girija Prasad Koyarala, um, uh, told me that, look, we, the Nepalese, see global, global affairs. They were with the same worldview as Canada does. We have a lot of commonality. And the Canadians uh, have fought uh, together with the Nepalese during the, the great wars, World War I, World War II. So, uh, and so while it is not publicized in a big way, there is no doubt in my uh, experience and mine that the Canada-Nepal 
relations are much more intimate than we are publicizing. So one of the things that the Federation of uh, Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce should do is to try to, to bring it out, you know, by way of maybe occasional newsletter publications, <laughs> etc. Also in 1993, we, uh, when I became the, uh, the honorary counsel here in Toronto, and that's, um, the University of Toronto South Asian Studies uh, Graduate School, they said, will you join hands with uh, us to create um, a seminar? So we developed a seminar for economic development of Nepal, you know, opportunities, et cetera. And we followed that in 1995 also, um, that that was well attended by the, the Canadian um, business groups, as well as people in politics and government. And that uh, actually led to a number of trips officially uh, from Canada to Nepal. In 1995, Ontario, for example, which is one of the largest provinces in Canada, uh, sent a delegation uh, to South Asia, you know, what, through the cooperation. Uh, and they went to uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, India, and then, uh, then, then ultimately Nepal. When I was told about that, the delegation was going, it, headed by the by the way, uh, Minister of our International Trade, I said, would you like to meet with the Prime Minister? And they said, oh, we'd love to do that, but you know, uh, it was too short a notice. I said, don't worry. So, you know, in Nepal, the bureaucracy is very small. You know, people communicate very quickly. So we were able to get um, the Canadian delegation, including Bob Huguet, who was the then the, Canada, the, the, the uh, Minister for International Trade in uh, Ontario to uh, meet with the, with the highest uh, political uh, the leader of the government. Uh, so, and uh, we've had, uh, uh, prior to the monarchy's uh, abolition in Nepal, we had kings visit Canada, uh, sometimes informally, but they were here. Uh, we had the guy, uh, the, the general, four-star general, um, uh, Mr. General Tapa, uh, come here and, you know, visit uh, Canada. And I, I took an opportunity to introduce him to a number of people. So uh, when I went to Nepal, I remember Mr. Ketan's uh, uh, dad, uh, father, you know, he, he was uh, very interested in learning about Canada because he was going to collaborate on Arun 3 project that Canada was, was part of it. Uh, I think we have to do a lot more uh, in terms of seminars, symposium, uh, groups visiting uh, each other countries uh, than, uh, than, than just uh, hope that it will you know, automatically come out. The effort needs a, a focus and the creation of this Federation of uh, Canada and Nepal Chamber of Commerce, in fact, gives us the, the structure, the institution that can do things. Um, so I, I don't want to take too long a time. I would be extremely uh, interested and uh, willing to help the Federation if the Federation were to take on one or the other. Uh, we also, I should in passing mention that we had a Nepal caucus in Parliament of Canada um, uh, not too many uh, years ago. Now, I don't know whether the new Parliament has that Nepal caucus, but it is something that the Federation should look into and we could ask uh, Ambassador Dungana to also uh, sort of help us out uh, since he's based in Ottawa. And all of these things is gonna be 
wonderful for the uh, for the uh, two countries um, that you know I am interested in and the group group here has an interest. Thank you very much, Mr. Pardo. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, our honorary consulate uh, general for Toronto, um, Mr. Sarma. You have been uh, a great mentor to FC and CC and a great advisor. Like whenever we need help, we are all you are always there to easily accessible to us. And thank you for a great um, mentioning various aspects of our bilateral relationship. And next speaker we have today is uh, Consulate General for Calgary, Alberta, uh, Mr. Steve Hess. Please go ahead, uh, Consulate General. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Podell, and uh, good day to everyone on the call. Uh, I certainly echo the comments of my ambassador with respect to the the, the bilateral trade and uh, and other affairs between Canada uh, and uh, Nepal. And it certainly shows how strong those are in the length of time that Canada and Nepal have had these diplomatic relationships. Uh, my role in, in, as consul in Calgary uh, is largely to engage and continue to engage with the government of Alberta. Uh, and I was grateful that, that Garnet mentioned the energy sector uh, because it is of course such a large part of the Alberta economy. But the fundamental strength that we have in Alberta in relation to Nepal is the, uh, the large uh, and, uh, and, and considerable engagement of the 15,000 person uh, Nepali diaspora that is in the province. Uh, whether they are uh, middle managers as they sit in Calgary uh, or Edmonton, uh, oil workers in Fort McMurray, uh, the uh, students that are at the University of Calgary, the uh, tourism, uh, the people who work in the tourism industry in the mountain areas, including uh, Everest summiteers, uh, Sherpas who work in that industry, uh, they all contribute considerably, uh, not only to the economy in Alberta, but to an understanding of uh, Nepal and, and make my job easy in terms of being able to speak about uh, Nepal to the government of Alberta. Uh, it's also relatively easy to uh, speak to Nepalis in Nepal about Alberta. Uh, and during my trips uh, to Nepal, I've had the pleasure of interacting with the Canadian Honorary Consul in, uh, uh, in Kathmandu, uh, Dr. Buddha Basnyat, who has strong ties to the University of Calgary. So at, at the end of the day, Alberta has uh, a significant position uh, and a significant role to play in terms of helping attract business to Nepal because of the strength of uh, the Nepali diaspora. So uh, with that, I, again, I, Mr. Bodal, I congratulate you on putting this seminar together and look forward to many more years of uh, diplomatic relations, relations between Canada and Nepal. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Consulate General, Mr. Steve Hess, uh, for making your time and um, looking forward to work with you together in the future as well. Uh, so next uh, guest we have today is uh, Mr. Mohan Krishnas Fresta from Nepal, and he's a former ambassador for France. Uh, <clears throat> um, as a former ambassador and uh, 30 years of diplomatic experience, uh, um, experience like what should be our priorities to open Canadian visa and trade office in Nepal? As well, as we all know, Canada only have one consulate general office in, in Kathmandu, Nepal, with limited opening hours, while Nepal has one embassy and four consulate office in Canada. Why do you think uh, Canada is not being able to reciprocate the same? Mr. Uh, Mohan Krishnas Resta, the floor is yours, please. Thank you. It's okay, audible now? Yeah, it's audible. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, thank you, BJG, and also thanks to moderator ISRG also. Actually, uh, I have prepared my text so that not to miss any points. And I'll, I'll also come to that point where which you have asked. Okay. And uh, I would like to begin by uh, extending my warm wishes to your, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Piku Dungana and to distinguished panelists at this webinar, distinguished audience in Canada and in other countries. I say good morning, good evening from Nepal and good morning in Canada. 
First of all, I wish to thank President Vijay Paudil of Federation of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce for this kind invitation. I'm really pleased to attend this webinar to celebrate the 57th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Nepal and Canada and hosting of this important webinar with a purpose to promote Canada-Nepal trade. Congratulations and best wishes. Time has changed and it seems these days trade actually is the blessing aid. I consider that the establishment of the UFC and CC is a seminal step. This pioneering work is worthy of praise and support from all. Thanks and appreciation to all those involved in the formation of this forum. I'm sure UFC and CC's future activities will prove instrumental for the promotion of trade relations between our two countries. Trade, commerce, and investment are three pillars of the economy of any country. These sectors have em emerged as major components of the economic development with the establishment of the World Trade Organization in 1995, countries started indulging in free trade, rule-based trade, and trying to develop their trade practices on the basis of comparative and competitive advantage. Countries like Japan, Hong Kong, Korea, Singapore have benefited much from such trade practices. They lack any type of natural resources. Yet, they have catapulted their economies to much success, as well as developed their trade, commerce, and investment sectors massively. No country is independent from the three sectors and country-wise trade relations are based on complementarity. While we talk about trade between our two countries, we find that imports from Canada is heavy, while export from Nepal is still very low. Trade pattern is also cumbersome to Nepal side as our exports consist of only primary and territory producers fetching low prices. Socioeconomic situation between our two countries also vary greatly. Canada is highly developed, while Nepal is a landlocked and least developed country. In Nepal, industrial development has not reached to that point level, producing many goods for exports. Nepal's trade imbalance ratio is about 14 to 1 between imports and exports. Country's economy has become virtually import-based. All these facts pose great challenges to our country. Regarding trade between our two countries, we feel we greatly need to enhance export from Nepal to Canada. We have many producers like woolen carpets, warm possible producers, organic tea, coffee, and crafted goods for decorated homes, and many organic herbal products for good for human body. Many of our producers might be appealing to multicultural lobbying Canadian citizens. It is therefore incumbent on EFC and CC to take appropriate steps to introduce such Nepali goods to the Canadian consumers. I hope that thousands of Nepalese producers might have good markets in Canada, which ultimately might trigger to a big import volume in future. In this field, FC and NCC need to work assiduously to identify market opportunities for Nepalese producers. Nepal has been implementing economic diplomacy since 1996, with six main objectives like promotion of exports, tourism, EFDI, foreign employment, deployment of water resources, and increment in foreign aid. Five among these might have good opportunities for promotion in Canada. I therefore hold a view at a macro level that FC and CC should work following these steps as much as possible. Host trade shares on a regular basis, build contacts with the Chamber of Commerce in big cities, build contact with the importers and distributors, opening of outlets for Nepalese producers, host seminars and webinars at interval, in, interval times, exchange of views with the business leaders, exchange of trade relations between the two countries and other steps as deemed appropriate. In such efforts, our diplomatic mission must also extend full cooperation to FC and CC. Their joint efforts will accrue success and benefit in due course of time. Since several years, Nepalese economy has been expanding due to liberalization and deregulation, and we have a GDP of about $35 billion. More avenues are being opened and available for international business in many areas of agriculture, biodiversity, industry, tourism, and water resources development. Canadian businessmen can explore such opportunities in our country under EFDI. Government is taking actions to make EFDI more conducive, offering many requisite facilities at par with interest standards. We also expect Canada to open its diplomatic mission in Nepal in coming days on a reciprocal basis. Such move can help business community of both countries in appropriate ways for mutual benefit. As Nepal is set to graduate from least developed status to developing country status by 2026 AD, we, in fact, together need to re-energize our exercises to further develop, expand, and increase our export base as widely possible. We must produce diversified products for export to near and far markets. 
with new status, Nepal will need more understanding and cooperation from the government and people of Canada in coming days. Before concluding, I wish to extend my cordial greetings and best wishes to EFC and CC for overall success in their endeavors to promote trade with, between our two countries and in particular export from Nepal to Canada markets. Thank you. Now, uh, referring to your question about honorary consul, that is an interesting practice under the Vienna Convention of uh, 1964. Any country can appoint uh, the, um, the person to a post, but uh, not in the capital where there is uh, the there is embassy. Like like uh, you have Canada has one honorary consul in Kathmandu. Uh, suppose someday if the Canadian embassy is established in Kathmandu, he cannot work there, but he, they can they can appoint somewhere in Virat Nagar, Biragan, Pokhara, or other cities. You know, and we have uh, we have embassy in Ottawa and other uh, honorary consul now just I listened to Calgary and some other cities maybe also, I, I don't know exactly right now. This is a general practice. It depends on the need, need of the government being felt, okay? And uh, before, the, before the appointment, the um, uh, approbation of the uh, government is uh, necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh... Mr. Mohan Krishnasrestha, especially you have like uh, la long, uh, last, long, like almost 30 years of diplomatic relations uh, experience. Uh, so I really appreciate that uh, and uh, your point of views. Uh, next uh, guest we have uh, today is, uh, is uh, Mr. Sekhar Golsa. And uh, he's a president of FNCCI, Federation of Nepalese, uh, Nepalese uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Uh, so I'd like to welcome Mr. Sekhar please. Um, is he on the screen? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you. Please. Especially uh, before you start, I just want to hear on um, uh, like including the bilateral relations and all. I want to hear from you, especially on the, as a president of FNCCI, like what are the laws regarding IPI, IPR, intellectual property rights? Is that uh, sufficient in Nepal and uh, how has it impacted the flow of FDI in Nepal? So please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Vijayji, uh, your excellencies and uh, all the people who have joined in, in Zoom. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm a bit late as I was uh, part of another program. Uh, well, uh, as far as the intellectual right rules is concerned, there's a, you know, there is a, a lot of consciousness and uh, uh, there is a lot of effort which is going on for us to improve it. However, uh, you know, there is still a lot of challenges. Uh, you know, if you uh, look at it in relative terms, I think uh, there's, a, you know, there's been a, a lot of improvement in, in, in implementation of the existing laws and also uh, modifying the laws uh, further to international standards. Uh, however, uh, we are far from uh, where we should have reached. FNCCI, uh, through our trading committee, we have put in a special effort. And uh, we've been uh, we, uh, that, you know, for any FDI to come into inside the country, intellectual rights or intellectual properties has to be protected. And uh, this is uh, probably uh, the very important concern for all the FDI. So we've been working hard on it, uh, but uh, I have to uh, admit that uh, still uh, there's a lot more to be done. Over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for making that, uh, for clearing that. So um, I see that, uh, like, how is it for all the scenario, the situation of business environment in Nepal? Like, uh, especially we see Nepal is ranked as the uh, as a number uh, number ninety four in ranking of ease of doing the business. Like for and uh, people like all over who is that all over the country, uh, all over uh, the world. Uh, what do you think, how, how easy it is to uh, start up for the NRNs? <laughs> so uh, I always tell this, you know, uh, the ease of doing business is just one parameter. Uh, ultimately, it's uh, uh, the profits, you know, is the return on equity, you know, uh, which is the, which attracts the FDI the most. However, uh, coming to the ease of doing business, uh, we are improving. Uh, if you see the last uh, uh, research we had, however, uh, you know, uh, having said this, uh, there's a lot more to be done. 
Uh, as you know, for large investment, we have now an investment board, uh, we call it the IBN, uh, which uh, has got a one window uh, uh, solution for, you know, for getting all the approvals. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, it can be further improved. Uh, we have recently uh, on a process of signing an MOU, which probably we're going to uh, be signing uh, uh, next week, uh, you know, in presence of the finance minister. Uh, this MOU will also enable us that, you know, all the cases which is not taken up because IBN takes only the large investments and all the uh, smaller investments, uh, uh, we will FNCCI as the apex body. So we have set up a special cell to take up uh, these issues to facilitate uh, FDI. Uh, so uh, we feel that uh, we will probably look into further improving uh, ease of uh, doing business for uh, FDIs. Thank you so much, uh, Sekharji, for making your important time and remarks. We'll, uh, we'll uh, catch up with you again. Uh, thank you so much for now. And next guest we have today from Nepal is uh, Mr. Rajendra Ketan. Um, uh, Rajendra Ketan, uh, you especially carry a profile of uh, top 10 richest Nepalese in the world, uh, despite the challenges. What do you want to say to the people who talk about the political instability, lack of policies and investment insecurities in Nepal. Um, over to you, uh, Mr. Rajendra Ketan. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, MPs, Honorable MPs, uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, our my one uncle, Kunja Sarmaji, is here. My long-standing friend, Tulsi uh, Dharalji, is here. I'm very happy to see all of you. Ambassador Vrigu uh, has been a very uh, diplomatically strong uh, representative for Nepal in Canada. Well, uh, Nepal is very, in terms of law, in terms of policy, in terms of directives, in terms of uh, <clears throat> overall scenario, uh, everything is placed very well. There is no barrier in law, there is no barrier in policy, there is no barrier in uh, you know, investment security, there's no barrier in other things. There are a few things we need to do, like uh, avoiding double tax, uh, uh, double taxation between Canada and Nepal, mm, uh, study some uh, subjects like uh, what could be potential for Canada to for Nepal, what could be potential area for Nepal uh, in Canada, uh, including uh, new technologies, including infra infrastructure, uh, maybe something innovative. Uh, you know, this thing has to be studied further. Uh, the only barrier and problem which I see, uh, not only talking about the positive side, the red tapism and bureaucracy, which I think everywhere we, it's a trouble. But I think uh, looking at South Asia, Nepal stands in a better position. Things are being done. Uh, you know, uh, we have recently established Nepal Marketing Association led by Tulsi Dahilji and with the private sector as totally supporting him blankly. Uh, so things are moving very well. Uh, as I proposed in last meeting, I think we should take up a few subjects like uh, finding out uh, areas of uh, economic cooperation between Nepal and Canada, what and where Canada is interested, what and where Nepal is interested. We should uh, uh, you know, try to uh, explore and exploit these areas. I remember uh, Canadian High Commissioner's representative visiting me and uh, Kiran, I think it's uh, Kiran, somebody from Canada also being in touch with me and we've been working together for many times. Uh, so I think uh, we need to work together closely and this forum could be one from where we can stand together to see that the trade and economy, social economy, economy and trade, I mean, can be uh, grown together for the prosperity of both the countries. Thank you, BGG. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajinder Ketan, for your very, very uh, important and significant uh, contribution to the uh, Nepalese economy. And uh, you have been the champion as a global entrepreneur as well. And we are looking forward yeah. to- Can I intervene uh, on your uh, issue? Sorry? Yeah. Can I intervene on your issue of intellectual property rights? Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, when we signed WTO in 2003 4, uh, Nepal is bound to respect intellectual property rights, that is, PIPs, you know. 
and uh, the law is in position there is a department within the uh, department of industry i suppose or department of uh, company registrar so things are in place the arbitration and legal issues are being handled very well uh, and the official the, it cannot be resolved it goes to the court and nepal has to respect uh, the global phenomena on uh, you know uh, rights of the uh, intellectual property uh, be it commodity be it uh, the brand be it whatever it is uh, but there are certain loopholes on the law side which has to be rectified and we are seeking the support of the commercial bench of the court to handle it so that specialized law uh, you know um, uh, lawyers and specialized uh, decision makers are in place to look at the specific requirement of the intellectual property rights but so far nepal matches the global standard in terms of wto as i have been working with wto since 2000 and i see and i observe and i work with them and i know that it is in track thank you thank you uh, mr rajendra khetan next guest we have today is uh, mr i mean dr tulsi darel um, dr tulsi darel welcome to the webinar thank you thank you vijay ji i might be the last person <laughs> to say something maybe before, before let me let me go to like uh, dr okay. darel has been a marketing guru and has recently founded uh, and formed a nepal marketing association in nepal so uh, how do you think nepal should brand itself in the international market in terms that, of trade that is a good point i'm i'm just focusing on that part rather than talking in more things uh, first of all let me let me tell you that i teach uh, international marketing at centennial college for last 20 plus years and my area what i teach in the class i see that that can be applied here in nepal as well as in canada for your kind information and all our audience uh, the information that i am also part of a canadian marketing association as a brand council member and you might have seen in the chat box i had uh, just uh, sent that uh, the letter which uh, was sent by uh, the president of canadian marketing association uh, this is a felicitation uh, uh, letter to nepalese marketing association as uh, rajendra khetanji mentioned already i met him a couple of times in his office and then also golsa group is a very a close uh, member of the nepalese marketing association here the point is how we can expand our bilateral relationship not only from the government side from the not from the not for the government side as well say let's say example ngos and the public area and the business uh, councils and many other areas so this is important and i think even me and bjg and many our nepalese uh, uh, diaspora living in canada could play a bridge role in between making a good relations in between these two countries i am here in nepal for last 4 months i'm teaching from here online to my centennial students and during this period of time what i have learned in canada what i am engaged in canada i'm applying that in nepal as well that is why in last month we have established successfully nepalese marketing association which is very similar like american marketing association and canadian marketing association so this could be this could be a kind of milestone to expand nepalese businesses in the world now the relation between these two countries let's say example when you are thirsty you need to go to water water would not come to you similarly canada and nepal there are a lot of similarity but there are a lot of this you know the, the maybe it's not similar in in case of the economic advancement in case of so many other resources so in this case nepal needs to do more than canada what i think from nepal's government side nepal public business side as well you know we need to make a good relations we have to expand our business more than before as i see that since we established our diplomatic relations in from uh, since uh, 1965 uh, around a half billion dollar of support we have nepal has received from canada and if you see the import and export ratio in 2018 a uh, record shows that about more than 100 million dollar export from canada to nepal whereas nepal has exported less than 10 million dollar around so this is why the dim- imbalance of the businesses nepal is a fertile land we know we have uh, so much possibilities here in nepal to invest So in that case, Nepal need to make a really good welcoming environment 
to the Canadian investors and Canadian, a lot of other, uh, the people that who could be a very big attraction uh, to the Nepalese beautiness, Nepalese, uh, the Parthai land, you know, there's so many different ways. What I see here, finally, I want to just tell you that from my side, from your side, from other side, Nepal needs more support from Canada. So that is why it is important to make a good relationship with these two countries. And Nepal needs to do even more to attract Canadian investors into the Nepalese uh, industry and trade. Thank you so much, Vijayji. Thank you, Dr. Darel. Um, especially you have been an advisor of FCA and CC as well. And, uh, and you have been doing, uh, doing a lot of uh, initiative. And also like you are the 25 uh, immigrant award winner as well. So we are expecting a lot from you in terms of working forward together. And uh, especially Concern Nepal has been doing uh, this uh, bilateral relationship program in the previous years. And uh, we are uh, continuing in the days uh, as a Chamber of Commerce as well. So thank you so much for your very important uh, remarks. And uh, next um, we have uh, President NRNA Canada, Deepak Gautam, but I have not seen him so far. So I think we are like, uh, it's, it's been a, a long and engaging uh, conversation with all of you. And before uh, we conclude, uh, uh, I would like to take some views from our chief guest, uh, Ambassador Brigo Dungana. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vijayji. Today, uh, I, uh, I'm sure that uh, we have had a very good discussion and uh, uh, the various uh, the representatives from uh, different entities as well as uh, the prominent members of uh, the private sector and the business entrepreneurs uh, uh, made uh, their exceptional uh, remarks on how to enhance uh, trade uh, 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 investment and other economic activities between Nepal and Canada. And uh, I think uh, I have also taken note of several uh, countries suggestions so that uh, may need uh, uh, some kind of uh, consideration on the part of uh, our government. Uh, so on the part of the embassy, we would uh, continue uh, having uh, con uh, constructive engagement with the business community in Canada as well as in Nepal. And uh, I really look forward to facilitating uh, the more interdependence and interconnectedness between the uh, private sectors of the two countries so that we could uh, really uh, realize uh, this uh, greater trade and economic uh, engagement between the two countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, our Ambassador Vigo Dungana. Um, I think this concludes our webinar. And uh, at the end, as a president of uh, Federation of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce, I'd like to thank our chief guest, His Excellency Ambassador Rigu Dungana, our special guest, uh, uh, keynote speaker, speakers, and all the panelists uh, for your precious time and input during this important um, milestone celebration of uh, India, uh, sorry, Nepal and Canada bilateral relationship. And uh, this is a perfect time to take Canada-Nepal bilateral relationship through the promotion of trade um, through the promotion of trade as soon as we head towards the normality. Every country is looking to expand in terms of economic prosperity during this uh, economic uh, downturn. And it's time to shift our paradigm from sub-local to sub-global uh, very soon, I guess. And looking forward to work together with all the stakeholders in Nepal uh, and Canada to promote uh, trade in the days uh, to come. Thank you all the panelists and um, our moderator, Aisa Gurung, uh, and all the executive team of FCNCC for making this uh, uh, happen. And uh, everyone joining live at canadacover.com and making this program uh, a successful event. And we'd like to see all of you in the future of webinars and our webinar series that will be organized by uh, Chamber of Commerce in the days to come as well. And uh, thank you once again. And um, uh, yeah, this concludes our seminar. Thank you so much. And I'd like to end live here. Thank you. <laughs>